When people talked about ripple, ripple effects of the Supreme Court uh, decision on abortion, this is what they were talking about. Last night, one of the largest hospital systems in Kansas City, Missouri, announced that it would no longer be providing emergency contraception in light of the Supreme Court uh, knocking down Roe versus Wade. Missouri is one of the states where abortion is now against the law. And so this one hospital system said that given the vague language in the law, it would be stopping the administration of the morning after pill in every one of their hospitals in the state, just in case. The thing about this, though, is that emergency contraception is not abortion. It is contraception. It's in the name. You cannot terminate a pregnancy that does not yet exist. And you would think or hope that a major, major medical institution would know this. This hospital system, by the way, has since reversed its decision. It will once again begin administering emergency contraception. It received swift condemnation for lumping Plan B into the same category as abortion services. Other health care providers called the move dangerous, and it is. Because this is exactly the nightmare scenario that Republican-controlled lawmakers will use the end of Roe as an excuse to try and ban access to contraception as well. This one hospital's decision to briefly cave to those expectations signals that we could be approaching that very nightmare sooner than we anticipated. But in the early days of this crisis, and that's where we are, all focus remains trained right now on expanding the number of people who can access legal abortions now that it is no longer a guaranteed constitutional right in America. Let's take, for example, North Dakota. North Dakota has had just one abortion clinic for more than 20 years now. It's in Fargo, North Dakota. It's called the Red River Women's Clinic. North Dakota is one of those states that had a trigger law already in place to ban abortion once Roe versus Wade was struck down. That trigger law will go into effect on July the 28th. And so for now, that lone abortion clinic in North Dakota will keep the lights on until it is forced by law on July 28th to shut everything down. Because at this point, at least for the foreseeable future, trying to expand abortion access in a state that is hostile to abortion is basically a non-starter. You would quite literally have to somehow move heaven and earth to make the impossible possible. But it seems like the Red River Women's Clinic is going to try, at least as far as the earth part of the equation is concerned. That lone North Dakota clinic is incredibly close to the border with neighboring Minnesota. It is literally just a 10-minute walk across the river, the Red River, after which the clinic is named. And so the Red River Women's Clinic says it is going to quite literally pick up the entire operation and move it across the river and plop the whole thing down in Minnesota. It's a kind of idea that sounds so harebrained on paper, but it has the potential to actually work. And joining us now is Tammy Krumenauer, uh, Krumenacher. She's the owner and operator of the Red River Women's Clinic. Tammy, it is... Uh, I was about to say it's good to see you again. It's not good to see you again, actually. The, every time you and I talk, it's because there's bad news. But around that bad news, uh, you and, and your colleagues who have devoted your, your time and lives and careers to uh, women's reproductive health and women's health care have decided that there's something you can do. Tell me when you started planning for this and how logistically this move across the Red River into Minnesota is actually going to work. Yeah, thanks, Allie. Um, so last fall, when SB8 came out in Texas, um, there was a special session planned in North Dakota. It was meant to uh, help spend down federal COVID dollars, um, but some legislators in North Dakota said they would like to copycat SB8. And we were fearful that they were going to use that special session to do that. So we started looking at space or looking for space um, in Moorhead. And we just weren't finding what we needed. Um, it's just there weren't very I many ideal spaces for us. Um, we kept looking, kept looking. Um, and then the leak came out, you know, in May, and it just really accelerated our process. Um, and so we've been able to secure a location. And we plan to, you know, like you said, provide abortion in North Dakota as long as we legally can. 
Um, and then we will provide in Moorhead, Minnesota. Is there one of the things we've been hearing about, in addition to what I was just talking about in Kansas City, the um, the, the ripple effects of a ban on abortion, is these fears that there is going to be uh, a uh, Handmaid's Tale type hunting down of abortion providers. Are you worried about the people who are employed by you or who work with your organization in North Dakota who will be chased down by the law because providing abortion is going to be illegal in, in, in North Dakota? So even though it's happening in Minnesota, is there any liability for you and your staff? There's never zero risk. Um, there's certainly a low risk, and, and we've discussed that with our attorneys. Um, you know, it would take a prosecutor who feels like they want to come back after us. Um, and we actually had a patient today who, on her paperwork, wrote, I'm fearful for prosecution of myself. So not only are our staff confused and scared, maybe, but patients are expressing those fears as well. In our lifetime, we are once again hearing women who are fearful of their own prosecution for seeking an abortion. Uh, Tammy, thanks very much. And I, I, I don't mean it's not good to see you. I'm, I'm so grateful that people like you are out here doing this. I just wish we could talk about something else sometime. Maybe one day we'll be able to. I Tammy. hope so. Thanks, Allie.